can you just stand there and watch me die? I'm afraid you've overestimated me. Pushed people over the edge, Carl. I need help, Lucas. I gotta tell you, Carl, you're looking for help. You're in the wrong company. You got that right. Pretty bad tummy ache, huh? You have poison. Sam, you're the artist. Don't you care? If our positions were reversed, would you care? You've got to be kidding, Carl. You expect Kathleen to help you? Do you want something, Carl? Kathleen, you're too decent for this. That's what you always count on, isn't it? The decency of others. Please. He said, please. He says, I beg you, I'll gag. Rachel. You and I are all good people. Most of you. We are, aren't we? Oh, that didn't stop Carl, did it? He went after us all anyway. No, 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 no that's not and true. Over that's and true. over again. Amanda, Amanda, you're not like these people. No. no look, look, look at that. They've done to me. You'll help me about you, Amanda. Amanda. Frankie Frank? Yes, Officer Pistone. Yes, thank you so much for coming by so quickly. Um, can you run this by me one more time? You guys got a call from a dock worker who says he saw Charlene Hudson boarding Windswept before it blew up? He just came in and ID'd her picture. He knew it was her from all the flyers hanging around. Is he absolutely sure? I'm afraid so. Did he say anything else? Just that she wasn't alone when she went on board. Was she being forced? He said they were walking side by side. He, uh, he got a clear look at Mrs. Hudson because she turned towards him and caught his eye. Uh, and was this other person a male or a female? He couldn't tell if it was a female or a short guy. Uh, whoever it was was wearing one of those long rain slickers with a hood pulled up. This is a copy of the witness's statement. I can leave it with you if you like. Um, I'll leave it for Detective Harrison. I'm uh, real sorry, Miss Frame. I know Mrs. Hudson was your family, and uh, I was supposed to tell her husband, but if you'd like to be the one, I uh, won't go over with the official report until the morning. I can give you people some time. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thanks. <laughs> Charlene! John. John, it's Frankie. Are you there? John, uh, look, I'll call you back, okay? Where did you go? Uh, you have a scotch. Everybody's talking about that boat explosion, huh? Not that I know of. You ever seen that lady? You ever heard from a long time ago? Well, I've seen a lot of faces. Yeah, but have you seen this one? And have you seen her in the past few days? just want to be alone, right? I've seen her. I know Charlene.
know my wife? I used to see her here a lot. Used to? Sure. But when was the last time you saw her? Tommy, I'll have whatever he's having. My name's Phyllis. Phyllis. John Hudson. Nice to meet you. Have you seen her in the past few days? A few days? Don't know if it's been that recent. In the past week? Well... In the last past few months, whatever. When? When have you seen her? You're really hurting, aren't you? You called her Charlene before. That's her name, isn't it? She used to call herself something else when she was when she was down here. We all do that. I never got introduced to her myself. I just see her around working. You didn't know she was one of us, did you? She never. It's just complicated. I'm listening, if you want me to. Look, all I want to do is find one person who has seen her in this past week. If it matters to you, John, it matters to me. You know, one of the great mysteries of life has been solved tonight, and I was a part of it. Oh, yes? What mystery is that? I always wondered why God created yuppies, and now I know. Well, do share your theory. Well, I think it's their devotion to the party, certainly, and their voting power as a group. Mm -hmm. But mostly I think it's their really deep pockets in search of a politically correct issue to support so they can run out and tell all their friends about it at brunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, candidate for the people. Yes, you are politically correct, Some, aren't you? Sometimes I wonder if I want to be. Or do you want to be like your esteemed opponent who cares about himself and everyone else who's just like him and then to hell with everybody else? No. You are not self-righteous, Grant. You're right. It's a big difference. Thank you. Oh, I really love tonight, you know? <laughs> I did, too. And I really think all those contributions are going to give the campaign fund a huge shot in the arm. Vicki, I want to say something to you. Did I do something wrong? No, of course not. Oh, Why would you think that? Because it's kind of expected with me, you know? That has not been my experience with you at all. Really? I hope I say this right. Well, just go. I mean, I talk. You, I love listening to you talk. I love the way you say you, things you, you say. You see, that, that's it right there. What? You, you make me feel like I can do anything. You, you, you make me feel like um, I, um, I don't know what what I do what, what I do matters. That it, it makes a difference. It does make a difference. Well, last few years I haven't been too excited about all of this, you know. Well, hey, look, I, I know you had a, a string of bad luck. I, uh, I put my career behind everything else, you know. I don't think your career suffered. In fact. I think you're going to win in a landslide. Well, I don't know about this, but I do know that I have a desire to win in a way that I haven't felt in a long, long time. I really don't want to answer that. I'll get it. <clears throat> Grant Harrison's office. Vicki. Frankie. I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, no, no, no problem. Is something wrong? I was wondering if you'd spoken to John tonight. No, I haven't. Well, if you do speak to him, I, I need you to have... God, Frankie. This is about Charlene, isn't it? Vicky. The police have an eyewitness who saw Charlene boarding when swept before it exploded. <sighs> no. Yeah, uh, look, I, I really can't talk right now. Um, I have to find John, so... Uh... Yeah, I, I, I understand. I'm, I'm really sorry. Charlene, I... Oh. Are they sure? Did they find her? Someone saw her on that boat. God, what about John? What is he going to do? They just had that little baby. Harrison! Uh, Harrison, I was right! Someone has poisoned me. Sorry, I should have taken you much more seriously. Does anyone in this room knowingly tried to harm this man? Well, look at me, fool. What other proof do you need? Well, I need the truth. <laughs> uh, nobody's going to talk to me here? Jamie, Jamie frames in on it. Too. He knows that there's an antidote, but he won't tell it to me because he wants to see me dead. Carl, if someone has tried to poison you, then I need to know what they used. We're not going to tell you. Amanda, Amanda, you're not like the others. T -t -t tell them. Tell them I never harmed you. 
Come on, Carol. What do you say? We, we go talk for a little while. But I don't want to talk, Harrison. I need a doctor. And there's no one in this room or down at that miserable hospital is willing to help me. Carl, it's obvious that you're not among friends here. Now, somebody has tried to poison you, but I can assure you that I will prosecute that person to the fullest extent of the law. I don't believe it. Come on, Carl. I may hate your guts, but vigilanteism is not my idea of law and order. Now, if somebody has tried to poison you, you're obviously not talking until they get what they want from you. Yeah, they see me dead. Or in prison. What's the difference? I don't know, Carl. It looks like you lose either way. You're behind all of this, aren't you? No, no, Carl. Hey, no. You, you're trying to coerce a confession out of me. Do you have something to confess, Carl? Besides, do you really think that I would go to court with an illegally obtained confession? I've seen you found not guilty before. I really don't need to see that again, Carl. Is this the way for me to survive this? I don't know, Carl. You look pretty bad. And you could be dying. And again, I not a doctor. shouldn't have followed me here. Hey, I love Charlene, too. I mean, did it ever occur to you that maybe I didn't want to be alone? It's like losing her all over again. What do you mean? I loved her so much. She was the best thing that ever happened to me. Grant, Charlene was sick, you know? I mean, the person you knew... Loved me. She loved me. And, and I don't care what all the doctors said or her family. I know who she was, and she was wonderful. And even though we both knew it couldn't work out, I always felt that she was with me somehow. I'd run into Charlene and it would be awkward for both of us, but then I'd look into those eyes and all these memories would come crashing back into my head. It must have been hard. It wasn't. I knew Charlie was gone, but somehow I would see her in Charlie. I'd, I'd see the little things, you know, that... The way she brushed her hair off her face, or the little frown she would make when she saw something she didn't like. But I'd have Charlie with me again. At least a part of her. You know, it, it sounds like you should be happy you, you had her in your life. I mean, even for a while. You know, a lot of people never feel that kind of passion. She did. She lived every day joyfully like it was her last. Just like me. What are you talking about? I think you do some pretty risky things. You gotta be kidding me. What, you put, out, you put your butt on the line to run for U.S. My Senate? My butt is not on the line. My father's is. I'm running for this office for him. I think that's a, an exaggeration, and I, and I think you know it. No, it isn't. Being with Charlie made me see that My my life was so full with her, and it was so empty everywhere else. I finally figured out what I wanted. So why didn't you quit? What? Politics. I mean, I mean, why didn't you just, why didn't you just bag it and take off? I guess I just needed a hobby. I think you're saying things you don't really mean, and that's okay. That's why I'm here, you know. Just go ahead. Just get it off your chest. No, you're right. I know. I'm going to pull out of the campaign. What? I have to call the party chairman. Grant, come on, knock it off. I mean, quit, quit fooling around I'm here. I'm not fooling around. I'm out of here. I'm out of here right now. I'm not going to lose myself again. We want a confession. Michael, you have to be very careful here. If he does confess, and there's even a hint that that confession was coerced, he won't need to be coerced. Ryan, he wants you again. Who, who did it? Which one? 
Oh, I'm not sure that anyone did anything. Now look at me here, imbecile. What have they given me? They've given me something. Oh, no one is talking. So that's your plan, is it? Huh? You've all conspired to kill me. And you're going to get away with it, too. Bec because you're in on it. I'm not sure that anything is going on here, but I can assure you that I am not involved in it. Well, sure, I've had my fantasies about taking you out, but, Carl, no matter what you believe, I still believe in the law. Of course I do. Go to the hospital. The tests are probably concluded. But I don't even know if the tests will run through. I left there early. I, I thought I'd find thinking the thinking that you could bully people like you used to. Well, what would it take? What do you mean? If... I were to make a confession, would they admit to what they've done? Would they tell me the antidote? I can't advise you on this, Carl. Huh? Is that what you want? Is it? You want me to confess? You want me to admit that I... that I did... that I did hire someone to... Kill Rachel. Hmm. Oh, it's, it's true, yes. It's true. Huh? I, did, I arranged everything. Is that supposed to be news, Carl? What do you want from me? I told you I was responsible for what happened to her. You're all witnesses. You have what you want. It's not by a long shot. You just admitted to a crime that you already stood trial for. And the last time I checked, we can't prosecute you for the same crime twice. Confession or no confession. But then you already knew that, didn't you? No. Thought you slipped out of another one, didn't you, Carl? I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling worse. Oh, God. I can't focus. It's, it's terrible. Yes, it is, isn't it? Carl is feeling vulnerable. When I feel that way, I like to talk. Yeah, me too. You fixed the brakes on my car and you almost killed Jenna. I, I, I never meant to hurt the girl. You and I go way back, don't we, Carl? You. Yeah. You're the one who did this. You're yeah, the only one in this room who could have done it. Done what, Carl? If you don't feel safe here, Carl, why don't you just go? 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 Go where? I'd have done what I thought I did back in Arizona. None of this would have happened, Carl, because you would have been dead. Rachel wouldn't have been hurt. Kathleen wouldn't have given up everything that mattered to her most. Her family wouldn't have grieved for her death. Do you know something, Carl? I'm a new age kind of guy. I'm not the same guy that you used to know. You're still a cunning little viper. I've given up a lot of the hate that I used to have for you, Carl. I figure I'll keep my nose clean. No problem. Then you blindsided me. If you wanted to fight, you just should have asked. Jake. Come on, it's your turn. You were going to kidnap a man at tonight, weren't you, Carl? Couldn't leave town without Mac's daughter, could you, Carl? What were you going to do with her? I was going to Brazil. Alone. That's bull. You'll, you'll never understand. We do. <laughs> and so do you. Carl, you're responsible for the explosion during the video that almost killed Frankie. No, I, that's, that isn't true, Amanda. Amanda, you know that. You know that. Is. Oh, I feel... Yes. Yeah, all right. All right, but... All right. Yes, I am responsible for the studio explosion. Yes, there you... You have what you want. Please, please, please. I've, I've given you what you want. I mean, can you really just stand there and watch me down? Please. Please. Come on, Grant, 
stop saying these things. I mean, you're not going to drop out of the campaign. Watch me. Why? Because I never really wanted it. That is a lie. Believe what you will. What did you say to me right before Frankie called with the news about Charlene? Huh? You said you were happy to be in politics and that you couldn't wait to make a difference as a U.S. senator. I do what's expected of me, Vicky. Not what I want. I haven't really done that since Charlie. Not even Paulina's had that effect on this me. This is the biggest load of lame excuses I think I've ever heard. Call it what you want. I don't want to run for Yes, all... you do. Hey, when are you going to realize that you have a life of your own, you know, and your father and all your ex-girlfriends, they don't know you as well as you know yourself. Vicky, I've made a decision. Right, you have. And that decision is so you don't get what you want. You want to know why? Because it scares you. What makes you think you know what I want? I have been joined at the hip with you for months. I've seen the way you handle the press. I've heard your speeches. I know your stands, Grant, and I believe in them. And I think you do, too. So fine, okay, you can, it's easy to say, I, I, I'm doing this because of my father. Or I'm not going to do this because of what happened to Charlene. But you know what's really hard? To say, I'm going to try to lock away all that pain, and I'm going to take a chance. Because it's what I really want. Are you willing to take that chance? I really wish I could help you more, John. I, I know I seen her in here, but it wasn't like yesterday or something. But recent, like I said before. I wish you could remember. I wish I could too. Are you tired? Why don't you let me take care of you for a while? I can tell you need someone to look after you. Why don't you come back to my place with me and rest? I'll help you talk to some of the other girls tomorrow. Tomorrow? Sure. You can't go asking questions on your own. They'll think you're vice and they'll split. Why don't we go and talk to them now? John, none of those girls want to do any talking now. These are prime hours, if you know what I mean. What are you doing here talking to me? I don't know. I heard something in your voice when you were talking to Tommy, and I wanted to help. Let me help, John. John. Frankie. Frankie. This lady's name is Phyllis. She saw Charlene. Can I talk to you for a minute, please? Sure. It's important. John, I have just come from the police station. And they have an eyewitness. Somebody saw Charlene boarding one swept before it exploded. She's gone. John, is everything okay? Could you leave us alone for a minute, please? Frankie, it's not true. It's John! Just not... John. She, she, saw, she saw Charlene just this past week, right? Is that true? I said I'd seen her. I just didn't say when, for sure. Don't you dare! Don't you dare go giving this man false hope! Sorry, I really am. It's just, I sort of got used to telling men what they want to hear. I'm sorry. Frankie, she's not. She's let's, not. John, let's get out of here, okay? She's not gone, Frankie. Let's go home. Okay. Come on, Vicky. You can drop the act now. What act? I'm serious. Goading me is not going to get you anywhere. I do have a theory, you know. I'll bet you do. You and me? We come from similar families. Do? Uh huh. I mean, your father's a self made man, so is mine, but uh, there's one big difference. Your father doesn't try to live his life through you. My father didn't even know I existed until I was 18. And then at 18, all of a sudden, I find out that I'm really rich. I mean, I thought I was going to have to struggle my whole life. Then I find out I have these super wacky, wealthy parents, and I am sitting pretty. I don't see where any of this is going. I knew what it was like to have nothing. And I learned really early on not to take anything for granted. When I take everything for granted? Well, I mean, it's like you have sympathy for the underdog, you know, but you, but you don't know how to appreciate anything well, you've been I, given. I don't know if I want to talk about this anymore. Well, tough. Tough? When are you going to stop feeling sorry for yourself, Grant? Huh? I mean, when are you going to realize that everything you have ever wanted is right here, right in your hands? 
Okay, I'll bite what's right in my hands. Power. Success. But most of all, satisfaction. I mean, belief in yourself. Those are the things that really turn you on. I've seen it. Everyone's seen it. Well, I got you, didn't I? No, didn't don't, it? don't be so sure it? of yourself. I am sure of myself. And I think deep down inside, you're sure of yourself. I mean, I know I've seen it. I've heard it. I've felt it ever since I got to know you. Grant, you know, I, uh, I really did love Charlene. You know, one of the things I liked best about her, she fought back. <laughs> yeah. And I really think if you remember anything about her, you should remember that she lived her life exactly the way she wanted to. And I don't think she'd want you to turn your back on your future. Neither do I. How's it going in here? I was brave. They have admitted to poisoning me. Now you got to get me to your hospital. You don't have to go to the hospital, Carl. What? I got your test results back. There's no poison in your system. You too. You too. I knew it. Carl, I can't be sure, but I think you had an allergic reaction to something you ate or drank. No, 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 no. This, this is insanity. No, Carl, this is an end to the insanity. Well, I deny everything. I mean, you, you can't prove anything. Uh, I don't think that'll work, Carl. Look what I've got. Turn around, Carl. This, this will never hold up. You're under arrest for the attempted murder of Frankie Frame, for starters. It's all right here, Carl. Judge Covelli's going to be real glad he issued that court order. This, this, this isn't over. Goodbye, Carl. Goodbye. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you. Well, hey, you guys, what's a party without music? Come on. You understand your rights as they've been read to you? Feeling smug, are we? Me? Smug? Impossible. These charges will be dropped. Don't think so. So how's that bellyache? Now that you know that you're going to be spending 15 to 25 in a federal pen. I'll have your badge. I'll bring up charges. I don't think so. See, this time it went by the book. I promise you this. You and your whole family will go down. Oh, come on, Carl. Let's not make this a personal attack, shall we? Oh, we all know how pretentious your family is. Oh, yeah, that's right. We don't separate our plastic bottles from our aluminum. It's really disgraceful. I'll give information to the press. Everything that matters to you and yours, I shall destroy. Can't wait for that. It must be a real bombshell. Yeah, it is. I may lose this battle, but I put you on notice. You've given me reason to declare war. There's a lot of hot air in this elevator. Can't wait to step outside, get a breath of fresh air. Your life will change, Harrison. I say so. Hey, good work. You need a lift? Yeah. Hey, did you see how pathetic Hutchins looked? Ah, yeah, it was great. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> yes, honey. Boys, now that everybody is feeling better and Carl is gone... Do you mind telling me why I was locked up in your office while everything it was, was happening? For on your here? own good. Yeah, at least you had a window. Give us a little credit. You left me completely in the dark about this. Not completely. We told you some stuff. Yeah, everybody told me to stay next to you because something was going to go down out here. Five minutes, I'm standing here, and he comes along and kidnaps oh, me. Oh, better than Hutchins, wouldn't you say? I hate to play the damsel in distress. Amanda, it was for your own good. You said that already. Well, stop harping on this. Everything worked out perfectly. We hired our own harem girl to divert Carl and to keep you safe. Can I talk to you 
alone for a minute? Why? You better go with her. She's got that look in her eye. Let me show you my cell, okay? So, did our little friend enjoy his trip downtown? Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's Ryan. Hey, you guys oh, were great, all of you. Listen, you yeah, think you can get the charges to stick this time? Yeah, he's going to be put away for a long time. I can promise you that. Oh, I never thought these days would come. Uh, all of you are so wonderful. You knew exactly what to do in order to make him confess. It's incredible. Uh, congratulations. Oh, thanks. What's our next assignment? Uh, <laughs> no, no, I think um, you're all retired permanently. Thank so you. Why don't we just move on with our lives? Enjoy your party. No, Thanks. Yeah, we yeah. can say that you came dressed as an undercover cop. <laughs> no, I have to go meet somebody. I have a, a celebration of my own in mind. You know I'm right, don't you? Look, I'm sorry I had to go at you. No, way. I'm sorry. I said some things I didn't mean. Yeah, that is a habit that you're going to have to break, and fast. Why is that? Because when you're elected, there are going to be a if lot of... If I'm elected... Because when you're elected, there are going to be a lot of people who are just sitting around waiting for you to say something you don't mean. And you know what? Yeah. I don't want to see your name in any tabloids, okay? Okay. 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 No, it's cold out here. I'm all right. Yeah, I know. What do you think I'm going to do, hang around with some lowlife? No. That's a step. How do you know so much about me? Because I think in some ways we're alike. I like fame. I like being in the spotlight. I like to have an effect on people. In some ways, I think that's as powerful an addiction as life. <laughs> hey, what do you say we go get a cup of coffee? Your treat. My treat. I tell you I'm rich, now I'm paying. I've always been an advocate for equal rights. Mm. You know, you are going to be one of the best senators this country... Hey, Wyman's words, right? You are going to be one of the best senators this country has ever had. You know this for a fact. Oh, yes, I have it on very high authority. Well, whose authority is that? Mine. <laughs> and yours. Let's get out of here. All right. Come on. Are you still mad? Furious. I was just trying to protect you. You know that. I know that. But you didn't have to lock me in here to do that. Would you have listened to me if I asked you politely to come in here? I'm not an unreasonable oh, person. Oh, yes, you are unreasonable. No, I'm person. not. Mm -hmm. And you know what? What? I really don't like that Kevin guy. That Kevin guy's all right. You weren't stuck in here for a whole hour with him. Well, you were a barrel of laughs, too. <laughs> you didn't make a very good impression on my wife. I'm not your wife yet. I, uh, just stopped by to say goodnight. Listen, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm glad it's over. For everyone. Night. You know, he was just doing what I asked him to do. I know. But you just had to be difficult, didn't you? Yeah, right. <laughs> You know, we can, uh, we can really start over again now. I thought we did that weeks ago. Except now we don't have anything to worry about. All we have to think about is being together, the three of us, together the way it should have always been. Amanda, I love you. And I promise you I will always, always. said you're going to be home by 10. I did? Mm-hmm. Oh, I did. What time is it? After midnight. <sighs> Sorry. Oh, my feet are killing me. You are with Grant, weren't you? You know that. Yeah, I think he said the fundraiser was going to be over hours ago. He uh, needed to talk. Oh, oh he did. That's good. Look, we got some bad news tonight. Oh, what? What, you couldn't finagle any more dough out of the rich kids? Frankie called. They have an eyewitness who saw Charlene on the windswept right before the explosion. Oh, oh 
it's terrible. No, I'm sorry. It's Frank, you know? No, she's she's not doing well. She called looking for John. And I hope he heard it from her and not from someone else. What was she doing? What was she getting on that boat for? What? Why? Well, wait a minute. What? How come you don't... Weren't you at work tonight? Yeah. So how come you didn't hear about this? Uh, because I wasn't at the station for very long. You're on a case? Carl's in jail. Luckily, he'll be there for a long, long time. Seriously? Mm-hmm. We got his confession on tape. Oh, that is so <laughs> wonderful! Oh! I cannot believe this is finally over. I can't either. I just, uh, I'm going to cash in on that r and that they have been promising me as if I lock that guy up. Absolutely. You deserve some time off in a major way. Mm-hmm. You can help us out, too. Us? Grant, the campaign. I don't forget. I, I want to I get on a plane. I want to go away. I want to get an island. I, I just, I want to be alone with you. We can't do that. Sure we can. It's easy. No, I, mean, I, just... can't, I can't leave right before the election. Vicky. He's your brother. Hey, don't you want to be there when he's elected to the U.S. Senate? Hmm? Yeah, of course. Sure I do. Mm, so proud of you. Mm. Well, it's been a really long day. You must be exhausted. Oh, well, actually, I'm feeling better than I felt in months. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to sleep. Actually, uh, I don't know if I will either. What a night. Rachel. What? Hi. Sorry. You're going to think I'm crazy. I always think you're crazy. This is almost a letdown now that it's all over. That's not crazy. But you can have your life back now. You can finally put the past behind you. Well, at least I won't have my bodyguards hovering over me night and day. Well, now, I've been thinking. Uh, perhaps you should hold yes, on to the bodyguards. Since I have hired them, since the feds backed out of their deals, and if I'm ever going to feel like I have a normal life or I'm not going to be afraid anymore... Your choice. I... Well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, yes. I'm, I, um, <clears throat> I can't stay here anymore. Bay City's just not the same for me. You're leaving. Bravo has offered me a job in, in their New York office. Oh. Yeah. That'd be great for my resume. It's been kind of blank for the last four years. New York is... Far away. Ah, it's perfect for me. A city that never sleeps. Me and my insomnia, you know. Yes, I remember your insomnia. <laughs> I'll miss you. Well, I have a feeling you're going to be too busy, so... Kathleen. I know. You don't have to say anything. There is one thing, though. And what's that? Thank you for helping me get my life back. No matter what? No matter what. There'll never be anyone like you, Kathleen. Send me some Christmas cards, okay? (laughs) Oh. Okay. At least... May I drive you home? Sure. I made you a cup of tea. You should just try and rest. Try to get some sleep.
going to be all right, John. I promised Charlene I would take care of her boys, and I will. I'm not going to leave you alone. 